It's time for a Cats Review Roundup. Is it really as bad as the critics say? Folks, we really don't like being mean here at the Nerdist News Office, because instead of harping on how much things suck or how much we hate something, we'd rather try and have practical criticisms or critiques. But this doesn't always happen. Sometimes we slip up, but we do certainly set out to be positive and or constructive at the very least. But then, sometimes, things happen. Things that are so far outside of our control or purview that we just have to sit back, laugh, and point. Things like the original version of Sonic or X-Men Dark Phoenix. That's a movie, all right. Or even that good old starter Pokemon Poplio, that sweet clown seal. We don't like ourselves when we do it, but hey, we can't help it. We're only human, and these things happen. And sadly, one of these things happened again this week. The release of the film Cats. Now, from the very first moment we saw the first teaser at this year's San Diego Comic-Con, we knew there was truly something special about this movie. And by special, we mean horrifying, eldritch, the stuff of nightmares. But could the final product really be that bad? Well, the film is out this week, which means the reviews are out there in the wild, and if most of them are to be believed, then meowza, it truly is that bad. So let's have some fun and cut through some of the best of the worst reviews of the movie Cats. Here we go! <laughs> let's start things off on the nicer side with our pals over at Slash Film, whose review read, there's a thin line between idiocy and genius, and Cats pukes a hairball on it and rubs its ass all over it. This is a movie where a cat version of Rebel Wilson wears a halter top underneath a fur skin suit that she takes off with a zipper before leading an army of cockroaches in a song and dance number alongside mice with human baby faces. Wow, that was the nice one? Je Jesus, this is why I'm a dog person. Karen Hahn over at Polygon wrote, Cats defies all principles of linear time or practical storytelling. Cats is a fever dream, a hallucination, an approximation of what would happen if your third eye actually opened and you could suddenly see into the astral plane. Well, folks, look at the bright side. A ticket to Cats is probably cheaper than a weekend doing mushrooms with your friends at Joshua Tree. Now, over at Jezebel, Rich Jezwiak hits the nail squarely on the head. You have to hand it to the internet's hive mind. Sometimes we get it right. He elaborates on this point with, Cats mocking turned out to be entirely justified. The extent of the travesty at hand was immediately absorbed and expressed. This much is clear after sitting through all 110 minutes of the thing, wishing I could wriggle out of my seat in the movie theater like an actual cat does from the arms of its overbearing owner. Oh, wow. Now, Peter Bradshaw at The Guardian took time to have some fun with his review, breaking it up into traditional rhyme, all of the original T.S. Eliot poem. The twitching of ears on their heads is distracting. As they gaze at the green screen and sashay and crawl, it's weird to behold them all gurning and acting. And why do so many resemble Darth Maul? Whoa! Whoa! Let's not drag Star Wars into this. They have their own problems. Watch previous episodes to find out what. But speaking of that weird CGI, Empire's John Nugent had this to say. Neither human nor cat, they all look like laboratory mutants put through a Snapchat filter. Your brain will never comprehend it. It's jarring from the first minute and remains jarring until the last. Robert Abel from The Rap chimed in with Tom Hooper's jarring fever dream of a spectacle is like something that escaped from Dr. Moreau's creature laboratory instead of a poet's and composer's feline universe. An uncatty valley hybrid of physical and digital that unsettles and crashes crashes way more often than it enchants. And honestly, this seems to be the general sentiment across the board. Metro UK said, it's literally the stuff of nightmares, The Hollywood Reporter. I found it all exhausting. Boston Globe, oh God, my eyes. I mean, look, come on. Could it really be that bad? Thankfully not. Alyssa Wilkinson over at Fox had some kind words for cats. It's literally incredible. I hope I never see it again. And Angie Han at Mashable had this to say. I gasped with laughter. I covered my face. I pulled at my hair. I clasped my hands over my mouth to keep from screaming. Cats had broken me, and I'd never felt happier. In fact, our own Nerdist.com features editor Micah Arbiter had this to say. Cats' first act will leave you curious, confused, and maybe even a little ill at ease. But 20 minutes into Cats, or maybe it's 30 or 40 or two days or nine days, who the hell can tell, a switch will flip, and you'll come to some vague understanding of what you're being beckoned into. For some reason, this works for me. I don't know. It's nuts. It's Cats. It's hard to explain. I sprinted home from the screening, and I'm nauseated. 
Well, there you have it, folks. If you were looking for an insane spectacle outside the realms of the galaxy far, far away in the Rise of Skywalker this weekend, it sounds like Cats is the perfect way to spend a couple of hours. But what do you folks think? Do these reviews make you want to go see Cats right meow? Make sure you read our full review over on Nerdist.com. Or are you going to go see multiple screenings of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker? Our review is also up on Nerdist.com now and spoiler free. And tell me, what movie has the best anthropomorphic cat? The Cats from Cats or Mike Myers? from the cat in the hat. Let's discuss. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, why not give us a like and subscribe? And if you want to get notified every time we go live with a brand new show or drop a new video, please feel free to mash that little bell. That way you can be up to date on all the latest theories, news, and rumors in the pop culture world.